Right. It's like, you know, I want to get into this because this is a, I think this is a fascinating thing with you personally, that your diet, um, you're on this carnivore diet yes. now. Okay. So I want to preface that with something. I am not a dietary expert, so I'm now right. speaking as an uninformed citizen. Yes. Right? It's, well, this is anecdotal evidence from a human being that yes. ha has dealt with autoimmune issues yes. their whole life. Yes. You have done this for how long now? I've been on a pure carnivore diet for about two months and a pretty, a very, very low carb, greens only, modified carnivore diet for about a year so in the year and, and 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 a low carb diet for two years so from the time that i've known you i've known you for what two and a half years now something like yeah, that yeah yeah when i first met you you had much more weight on your body yeah you looked different yeah and you were back then you were eating like the standard diet right like normal yeah, people yes do. pasta bread meat yes. chicken whatever yes right you shifted over to only meat and greens. I saw you and I'm like, you look fantastic. I'm like, what are you doing? And you're like, I changed my diet. I only eat meat and greens. And I was like, yeah. wow, that's fascinating. Well, I felt like, okay, what you're doing is cutting out refined sugars and all yeah. these different things that are problematic, uh, preservatives, all the bullshit, processed foods. Mm -hmm. And you're having this extreme health benefit. And I was like, wow, that's really excellent. You're showing great discipline. Then you decided to take it to another place and cut out the greens. Yeah, I know. What was the motivation for cutting out the greens? Well, all of the motivation for this has been my experience with my daughter because she has an unbelievably serious autoimmune disease. I just talked to her this what morning. What is it called? Well, it's, it's arthritis, but it, there's, there's way more to it than that. But the arthritis was the major set of symptoms. She had 40 affected joints. And she had to have her hip replaced and her ankle replaced when she was 15 and 16. And so she basically hobbled around on two broken legs for two years in extreme agony. And that was just a tiny fraction of the, of the whole set of problems. I just talked to her this morning. She's in Chicago. Looks like she has to have her ankle replacement replaced. So that's next on the horizon. But, uh, but apart from that, she is doing so well now. It is absolutely beyond comprehension. So she's, she's, she's very trim. She had a baby, but she's very trim. She's down to about 118 pounds. She's about five foot six. She's just glowing with health. All of her autoimmune system symptoms are gone, all of them. And she was also seriously depressed, like severely depressed, way worse than you think. She couldn't stay awake for more than about six hours without taking Ritalin. Um, and she was dying. And I had a cousin, my cousin's daughter. She died when she was 30 from an associated autoimmune condition. So there's a fair bit of this in our family. It was bloody bleak, I'll tell you. And my wife always had a suspicion that this was dietary related, you know, and Why? I, well, we did notice that when Michaela was young, if, if she ate oranges or strawberries, that she'd get a rash. Like there were, there were, there were, and then when she developed arthritis, if she ate oranges in particular, that would definitely cause a flare. It was the only thing we could see. The problem is, is that in order to identify a dietary component, the response has to be pretty quick after you eat the thing. Like if it's two days later, how the hell are you going to figure that out? Right. A lot of these responses appear to be delayed for four days and last a month. So good luck figuring that out. Anyways, Michaela noticed about three years ago, no more than that now, five years ago, she was at Concordia University and, and struggling with her, with her illness and, and all the association, associated problems. She noticed that Around exam time, she was t starting to develop real skin problems. And my cousin's daughter, who I mentioned, had really bad skin problems and wounds that wouldn't heal. And that was partly part of the process that eventually killed her. And she thought, oh, it must be stress. And then she thought, wait a second, I really changed my diet when I'm studying. All I do is eat bagels. All I do is eat bread, sandwiches. She thought, maybe it's the bread. So she cut out gluten first. And it had a remarkable effect, like a really remarkable effect. And then she, she went on a radical elimination diet all the way down to nothing but chicken and broccoli. And then her symptoms started to drop off one by one. Like, and, and like one of the things that happened is she started to wake up in the morning. She started to be able to stay awake all day. And when you're only staying awake for six hours with riddle and staying awake all day, that's like having a life. And so a whole bunch of things improved. Then her depression went away. And I've had depression since I was 13, probably, and very severe. And I've treated it a variety of ways, some of them quite successfully. But it's been a constant battle. And my father had it, and his father had it. And it's all just rife in my family. And my wife has autoimmune problems in her. When you say depression, define it. Oh, oh, uh, how would you define it? Because that's, that's a blanket term. Yeah. 
Well, imagine, imagine that you wake up and that you remember that all your family was killed in a horrible accident yesterday. And you would feel that even all if nothing the time. was wrong? Yes, yes. Just just. It's dread. actually worse than that. Cause really? Well, one of the things Michaela told me was she thought, well, what's it like to be depressed? Well, imagine you have a dog and you really love the dog and then the dog dies. And then about two, three years ago, our dog died. And that was Michaela's dog and she really liked that dog. And she said, that was bad, but it's nowhere near as bad as being depressed. And I asked her too at one point when she was about 15 or 16, I said, look, you've got a choice, kid. Here's the choice. You can either have depression or arthritis. Which one? I'll take the arthritis. Well, that was after she'd lost two joints. So it was no joke. It's no joke, man. It, there isn't any. No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say there's nothing worse. Because worse is a very deep hole. Right. But it's bad. Yeah, people will prove you wrong, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Worse, yeah. worse is a deep hole. Anyways, her depression went away. All these symptoms went away. And like radically. So what changed her from chicken and broccoli to carnivore? Well, she, she, she kept experimenting. And she, she got very sensitive to all sorts of foods in the aftermath of that too. So this is why I wouldn't recommend that anybody does this casually because we don't understand much about it. But the upshot was that, well, she kept... She kept ch she kept experimenting and she started to add things back and take them away. And sometimes when she added things, the results were devastating. She was like done for a month. She ate the wrong thing, done for a month. All the symptoms came back. The depression came back. She thought that her whole dietary theory was wrong because it lasted so long. It was so extreme. And it's like it took her two years to figure out that really what she could eat was beef and greens. And then she figured out that she could only eat beef. So and the so, greens themselves. Well, look, so what hap happened? Okay, so... Two years ago, she said, Dad, you have to try this diet because you have a lot of the same symptoms as me. Now, I didn't have arthritis, but I had a lot of the other symptoms. And I thought, oh, Christ, okay, Michaela, I can try anything for a month. She said, try it for a month. I thought, okay, whatever. I can hang by my fingernails from the windowsill for a month. It's like, it's just not that big a deal. And so I, I eliminated, I went on a really low-carb diet. Okay, so this is what happened. I had gastric reflux disorder. And I was snoring quite a lot. I stopped snoring the first week. I thought, what the hell? That's supposed to be associated with weight loss. Because I had gained some weight. I weighed about 212 pounds and I'm about six, one and a half. So that was my maximum weight. I, I stopped snoring, which was a great relief to Tammy. So that just quit. And that's a big deal, right? Because if you snore, you have sleep apnea and then you don't sleep right. And it's like not a good thing. Okay, next. I started waking up in the mornings. I'd never been able to wake up in the mornings my whole life. I always had to stumble to the shower and then maybe I could wake up. It took me an hour and I felt terrible. And so all of a sudden I woke up and it was like, oh, look at that. I'm awake in the morning and I'm clear headed and, and things aren't gloomy and horrible. It's like, well, isn't that weird? Then I lost seven pounds the first month. I thought, seven pounds, that's a lot in a month. And I'd already gone for a whole year on a sugar-free diet and I didn't lose any weight. And I'd been exercising. Sugar-free, you know? but did you cut out bread and no, gluten? No, no. It was no. just no desserts, no okay. sugar. No, And I thought that might do it. Didn't make any difference at all. Seven pounds. Well, then, then I lost seven pounds the next month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. I lost seven pounds every month for seven months. It's like I'd throw away all my clothes. I went back to the same weight that I was when I was 26. And my psoriasis disappeared. And I had floaters in my right eye, and they cleared up. And then the last thing that went away for me, I was still having a bitch of a time with mood regulation, and that sucked because when I changed my diet, I didn't respond to antidepressants properly anymore. They weren't working. And so although I was getting better physically on a variety of ways, like radical ways, um, I was really having a bitch of a time regulating my mood, and I was having sporadic, really negative reactions to food when I ate something I shouldn't. So that took about a year and a half to clear up, and I was still really anxious in the morning up to three months ago, like horribly, and then it would get better all day. People said, well, you're under a lot of stress, and I thought, yeah, yeah, I've been under a lot of stress for like 10 years. It's like, it's a lot, but it, it wasn't any more stressful than helping my daughter deal with her illness, that's for sure. That, no, this is something different. And she said to me... Um, Quit eating greens. And I thought, oh, really? Jesus, Michaela, I'm eating cucumbers, lettuce, broccoli, and chicken and beef. It's like, I have to cut out the goddamn greens? It's like, try it for a month. Okay. Within a week, I was 25% less anxious in the morning. Within two weeks, 75%. And I've been better every single day. I'm better now probably than I've ever been in my life. And I haven't been taking antidepressants for a whole year. So I don't know what, and I weigh 162 pounds. Like I have no, I'm, I'm, and I've actually gained musculature. 
I've been doing some working out, but not a lot. And so I can sleep six hours a night, no problem. I wake up in the morning, I'm awake. If I take a 15 minute nap, that used to take me an hour to recover from, that's gone. Here's the coolest thing. I've had gum disease since I was 25. That's been serious enough to have, I've had to have minor surgical interventions, scraping and that sort of thing to keep it at bay. It's gone. I checked with my dentist before this last tour. No inflammation. And that's associated with heart disease, by the way, gum inflammation and gingivitis. It's a good risk factor for heart disease. It means the systemic inflammation is gone. And it's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to recover from gingivitis. And my gums are in perfect shape. It's like, what the hell? So here's what happened. I lost 50 pounds. It's like, that's a lot, right? I'm nowhere near as hungry as I used to be. My appetite's probably fallen by 70%. I don't get blood sugar dysregulation problems. Um, I need way less sleep. I get up in the morning and I'm fine. I'm not anxious. I'm not depressed. I don't have psoriasis. Um, my legs were numb on the sides. That's gone. Um, I'm certainly intellectually at my best at the moment, which is a great relief, especially doing this tour. Depression is gone. Um, I'm stronger. I can swim better. Um, and my gum disease is gone. It's like, what the hell? And you've done, you've done no blood work, so you don't know what your lipid, lipid profile right. is? Or no, I'll get that done again when I go back to Do you take to any vitamins? No. No, I eat beef and salt and water. That's it. And I never cheat, ever, not even a little bit. No Nothing. soda, no wine. Uh, I drink club soda. Well, that's not, that's still water. Well, you know, when you're down to that level. No, it's that's not. So Look, Joe, Joe, there's, there's club soda, sure. which is really bubbly. Mm -hmm. There's Perrier, which is sort of bubbly. There's flat water and there's hot water. Well, so those, those distinctions, are your yeah, Those <laughs> distinctions start to become that, important. That is crazy. Well, yeah. we ate last night and I ate what you ate. Uh, just, uh, we both had that giant tomahawk. Yeah. Uh, I had wine though. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about this. I'm very curious. And yeah, I think me I'm, too. I might try it. But I eat a lot of vegetables. Yeah. But I don't have any problems, like health problems. Hey, man, like I'm not, uh, disclaimer number two, I am not recommending right. this to anyone. However, I have had, however, I have had many, many people come up to me on the tour and say, look, I've been following your daughter's blog and I've lost like 100 pounds. I think, what, you lost 100 pounds? See, I lost 100 pounds in six months. I talked to a woman yesterday. She lost 15 pounds in one month. She was 70. It's like... This is, uh, here's a question. Why is everyone fat and stupid? That's a question, man. Because it's new. Is it? Something's, yes, it is. It's new. And it's not sedentary lifestyle. That, that hypothesis doesn't seem to hold water. There's something wrong with the way we're eating. And the, what's wrong is that we're eating way too many carbohydrates, I think. But remember, I'm no expert. It's a big shift. The elimination of most carbohydrates has made a big shift in my life. And I do cheat occasionally with bread, mm -hmm. occasionally with pasta. I will, I will go off with ice cream and things along those oh. lines. But most of the time, I'm just eating meat and vegetables. Most of the time. And then I'll have a cheat day like, you know, once a week or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Especially yeah. if I go to dinner, I'll have a little pasta. And it doesn't seem to mess me up too bad, but I do feel shitty after I do it. It's mm -hmm. like for simple mouth pleasure, I'm allowing myself to feel tired afterwards. Tired, tired. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one, man. Yeah. But like, I, uh, yeah, like, well, really, I can Insulin go on about spikes. six hours of yeah. sleep now. And it's so interesting to, I, I can't believe I can wake up in the morning. Like, I've, that's never happened to me in my whole life. And when I was a kid, 13, 12, I had a bitch of a time waking up in the morning. It was just brutal. I just thought that's how it was. This is what, I mean, again, I'm not a nutritionist either. But what's fascinating to me is I haven't heard any negative stories about people doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I have a negative story. Okay. Okay. One of the things that both Michaela and I noticed was that when we restricted our diet and then ate something we weren't supposed to, the reaction to eating what we weren't supposed to was absolutely catastrophic. What did you so, do? What did you switch to? Or what did you eat, rather? Um, well, the worst response, I think we're allergic to, or allergic, whatever the hell this is, having an, uh, an inflammatory response to something called sulfites. And we had some apple cider that had sulfites in it, and that was really not good. Like, I was done for a month. That was the first time I talked to Sam Harris. You were done for a month? Oh, yeah. It took me out for a month. It was awful. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I would say, so look. What, and what, so this is right before this whole truth conversation with Sam Harris that got during, stuck in the mud. 
during. During. So I, think were... the, I think the day I talked to Sam was like the worst day of my life. Not because of talking to Sam, but it was just physical. Oh Jesus, I was so dead. But so I, I didn't want to not do it. Because apple cider. Like what, what was it, it sulfites doing? Sulfites in it. What was it doing to you? Oh, it 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 produced an overwhelming sense of impending doom. And I seriously mean overwhelming. Like, there's no way I could have lived like that if that would have lasted for... See, Michaela knew by that point that it would probably only last a month, and I was like... A month? Yeah, From a month. fucking cider? Oh, I didn't sleep that, that month. I didn't sleep for 25 days. I didn't sleep what? at all. I didn't sleep at all for 25 days. How is that possible? That, that, that I'll tell you, you how it's possible. You lay in bed, uh, frozen in something approximating terror for eight hours, and then you get up. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Not good. And this good. is from so, fucking cider. From cider. That's what we thought, yeah. I mean, look, again, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, this is all a mystery to me. The fact that my daughter was so sick. See, the one thing that I did know, because I scoured the literature on arthritis when she was a kid, the scientific literature, and because we were interested in the dietary connection, and the only thing I could find that was reliable was that if people with arthritis fasted, their symptoms reliably went away. And that's actually a well-documented finding. But then if they started to eat again, then their symptoms came back. And I thought, well, what the hell? Does it not matter what they eat? They can't be reactive to everything. It's like, no, but they can be reactive to almost everything. And the difference between everything and almost everything, that's a big difference. And so Michaela seems to be maybe me too. And Tammy's on the same diet because she has autoimmune problems on her side of the family. And so Michaela seemed to inherit all of them. Your skin looks better. Oh, Jesus, Joe, I'm this way better. This is what's better. weird. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you look like more vibrant. Yeah. It's very strange. Thank you. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. Yeah. But the, the, see, my point is that you, you're saying that there's a, a, there, there is problems with this diet, but that doesn't seem to be a problem with the diet. It seems a problem with deviating from the diet, that your body becomes accustomed with it. Well, one of the th hypotheses that we've been pursuing, and there's some justification for this in the scientific literature, is that the reason that you lay on layers of fat is because the fat acts as a buffer between you and the toxic things that you're eating. Because fat is actually an organ. It has functions other than merely the storage of, of, of calories. And maybe when you strip out that protective layer, then you're more sensitive to what you shouldn't be eating. This is all speculative hypothesis, mm. right? Or maybe you sensitize yourself by removing it from your constant diet. Well, I don't bloody well know. Well, I would think it would be much more likely that because you think about people who are alcoholics, they develop a tolerance to alcohol. Yeah. You get off of that and then you have a drink and your tolerances are shot and then you immediately have a, a, an adverse reaction to the alcohol. Yeah. Same thing with marijuana. Yeah. When people do it all the time, you, your body becomes tolerant. Well, I think, I think that the layering of fat on might be part of the tolerance mechanism. Mm. So it's not merely a matter of caloric intake. It's a matter of, of toxic caloric intake buffered by whatever it is that fat is doing as a neuroendocrine organ. But again, like I said, I said I'm out of my depth here. But, you know, the whole everyone's out of their depth. The goddamn food pyramid was made by the Department of Agriculture, not the Department of Health. It wasn't predicated on any scientific studies whatsoever. We, should have, we shouldn't be eating massive quantities of corn syrup. We, ate, we eat way too many carbohydrates. W Michaela posted a paper the other day. A doctor has successfully treated type 1 diabetes with a carnivore diet. Type 1, not type 2. So that's bloody impressive. Yeah, so, it's, it's very curious to me because you're talking about the one adverse reaction, which is when you deviated from the diet. Yeah. What I'm talking about <clears throat> is when I read people's accounts of trying this diet, um, it's almost universally positive. Yeah, I know. But again, and that's the problem. Strength gains. Well, it's a problem with anecdo one. anecdote, right? I mean, it I'm is. not just... I'm sure. Not, and it's the same with all these stories that I'm collecting as I'm touring. And, you know, people... Lots of people have come up to me and said, look, I lost 45 pounds in the last three months. I think... Yeah. I think, well, it's shocking to me. I think, well, d what do you make of that? And say, well, I can't believe it. Well, who can... Well, I couldn't believe it. 50 pounds. It's like, first of all, I didn't know I had 50 pounds to lose. You know, I thought I was maybe 20 pounds heavier than I should have been. should have been 185, something like that. I guess that's 25 to 30 pounds. That was the maximum. I thought, no, no, I lost. I'm at 162, and I was at 212. So what's that? 50, 50 pounds. Yeah. That's a lot of weight. Jesus, I, threw, I had to throw all my clothes away.
It's, I can't believe it. Well, when even I saw Tammy. you last night, I was like, you're so slim. Yeah, like, yeah. your your stomach is completely flat, and, mm. it's, and this is I'm not... I'm a lean, mean fighting yeah, machine, man. But, and you're not a uh, an exercise fanatic. Mm. It's not like you're starving yourself. It's not like you're no, and I'm not running st- five well, miles That's another thing I should say to people. If you want to try a diet like this, you eat enough meat and fat so you're not hungry. Okay, you can't get hungry. You're not eating enough if you're hungry. And if you're hungry, you're going to cheat, and it's going to drive you stark raving mad. The other thing that was really cool is, like, I really liked sweets. Like, I kind of lived on peanut butter sandwiches and chocolate milk. Not, not really, but that was my go-to food, you know, both of which were terrible for me. Um, but um, after I stopped eating carbohydrates for a month, the carbohydrate cravings went away. You know, last night when we were out for dinner, somebody ordered bread pudding, and I bloody love bread pudding with caramel and, and, and ice cream. And so it was sitting there, and I could smell it, and I, you know, I thought I could go all fantastic Mr. Fox on that bread pudding and just tear it down in about 15 seconds. But it wasn't, it wasn't as intense as a craving for a cigarette if you're an ex-smoker. It was like, mm. well, it'd be really nice to eat that. But, like, my appetite declined by about 75%, and that's been permanent. That's been, so there's a perverse thing for you. I eat way less, and now I'm not as hungry. Okay. Well, how does that make sense? Well, you're not eating way less. You're eating way less things. Yes. Because you had a 30-ounce yes. steak last night. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm doing my I. best not to be hungry. Although it didn't look like it was 30 ounces. No, no, no. It was a small 30-ounce steak. <laughs> well, I think it yes. starts out 30 ounces before they cook it. Right. And it loses a considerable amount right, of volume. Right, right. It's very fatty. Right. But that's the other thing, too. You, you must have to get a lot of fat. Yeah, well, I eat fatty cuts of steak, and yeah. Michaela is buying fat directly from the butcher store, and we cook that up, cut it into small pieces, and fry it up till it's crispy. Wow, it's actually quite delicious. You're it's not bread pudding fat. with ice cream, but it's isn't uh, that funny? You mean? Yeah, peop- I know it's so ridiculous. Well, I want to, I want your blood profile. I want to find out what's going on with you because one of the big mis- misconceptions when it comes to cholesterol and saturated fat and food is that if you eat dietary cholesterol that it affects your blood yeah. cholesterol levels yeah. it's mm-hmm. not it's a super mm-hmm. common misconception well those so the thing about clinical studies with diet are virtually impossible to conduct because you just can't you can't conduct a proper randomly distributed controlled um, experiment it's too hard so a lot of what we're trying to do is pull out information from correlations right you can't do it. Which Doesn't is one work. of the real problems with correlating meat with cancer and diabetes and all these different diseases is because people are eating a bunch of shit with that meat. Oh, yeah, and they have different lifestyle profiles. Sure. And like, there's just endless numbers of confounding variables. And yeah. You only need one confounding variable that's, that's relevant to screw up the study. Right. You can't get that information with correlational studies. We try because it's impossible to do the studies. But How many people are incredulous? I mean, when, when they're, how many people, when, when they're hearing about this? Oh, uh, Everybody. Everybody. Well, you are not, but, you know, you're interested in this sort of thing. But they should be incredulous. Like when people make absurd claims, it's like, oh, well, I had 50 health problems and I stopped eating everything but meat and they went away. It's like, oh, sure. It's like, yeah, well, it wasn't you dying. So, and I see the results and I know it's an anecdote. I bloody well understand that. And I'm highly skeptical about all of this, but I'm telling you. So that's why I'm telling you what happened to me and what happened to my daughter and also what happened to my wife because she's... Tammy was always in good shape, and she's exercised a lot, and she reduced to the, to the uh, pure carnivore diet about a month ago. She lost like 12 pounds, and she was already slim. She's back to the same weight she was when she was 21. She's, she's like 58, you know, and she doesn't look 58, I can tell you that. So yeah, It's really fascinating. It's really fascinating because I just, I, I, as a person who studied diet, for many years, I would assume that you need phytonutrients. I would assume you need vi- vitamin supplements. Like vitamin C, for example. Yes. Turns out if you don't eat carbohydrates, you don't need vitamin C. Huh, who would have guessed that? How does that work? I don't, I don't remember. Michaela outlined a paper for me. Vitamin C is necessary for carbohydrate metabolism. But yeah. if you don't, if, again, remember, everyone listening, I am not an expert in this field. Right. So, um, but... But, but I want you to get your blood tested because I think yeah. if... It'd be pretty funny if it was in good shape. Yeah, it would be. I mean, and I'd, I'd like to find out what your nutrient levels are and where they're coming yeah. from. I mean, what, what, how yeah, much I'm nutrients getting a little, are you getting? I'm getting a little cramping in my toes from time to time, so I'm not sure about... Potassium, or, perhaps. Or, yeah, or magnesium. That's, yeah. that's a possibility. Well, that's but how easy that, to supplement. It's very easy, yeah. which is why I'm c- concerned about, like, and also minerals, you know? Yeah. I mean, certain minerals you're getting from vegetables that you're probably not getting. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. this, this is all like, look, it seems it's not impossible. hard to supplement that stuff, though. Colloidal True. minerals, you know, there's mineral pills. You could take plenty of yeah. well, there are people, vitamin supplements. there are people who basically lived on meat. Yeah. You know, the Inuit did, the Maasai basically did. I yes. mean, there, there's some supplementation, but not a lot. So, yeah. And apparently, if you do a carnivore diet, you're supposed to eat more organ meat. And I do some of that, but not a lot. But I can tell you, like, I'm, I'm in. Well, look, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't producing positive results. It's, yeah. like, it's not like it's fun. Right. I mean, for a while, well, it makes you a social pariah. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's invite the Petersons over. Oh, yeah, they don't eat anything. Oh, we have other friends. It's like, <laughs> well, that's how it works. It's not malevolence, right? right it's just right. if you're a pain, no one invites you out. And right. so, so I'm a social pain and an ideological pain, and now I'm a nutritional pain. So how it's like I have no friends. <laughs> how difficult is it when you're trying to get breakfast? Like, what do you do when you... Well, lots of times when we're traveling, we cook. So we usually stay in places where you can cook. Oh, okay. But most places you can get a steak. Mm -hmm. And so that's mostly what we do. We've been traveling in a motorhome, and so we've been cooking in the motorhome. Oh, And so okay. and I carry beef jerky with me, which we make. Wow. So, yeah. It's crazy. You make your own beef jerky. Well, so it's no easy. Nitrates. We have a dehydrator, and you just right. basically put salt on it and throw in the dehydrator. So that works pretty well. Do you anticipate continuing this? Well, I'm, forever? God, forever is a long time. I'd it like to be able time. to eat more things, but I'm going to experiment with that very, 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 very cautiously. I'm going to add mushrooms next because maybe I could eat them. Well, this is why I'm asking. There's positive benefits that a lot of people achieve um, and, and experience when they switch to a vegan diet. Yeah, and right. one of the things it is is you get off of the standard American diet with lots of refined sugars and a lot of preservatives and yep. bullshit, and then you find positive benefits. Chris Kresser has gone into depth about this, but then over time, the nutritional ben uh, deficiencies in that start to wear on your health. Yep. And I'm wondering well, whether and or not you're going to experience... Well, it's certainly possible. Well, certainly, eventually, this diet will kill me. No, life will. Well, you're right. <laughs> Biology right. will, yes. unless so, it science might, intervenes. It might be that for some people, a, a vegan diet is, or a vegan diet is it preferable. Well, well certainly are, to, a, to a standard American diet. Well, so. for sure, to a standard American diet. But also, there's so much biological variability. Yep. You know, the things that bother some people don't bother other people right. at all. And right. that's, that's something that we got to take into consideration. Yeah, well, that's why I don't want to universalize from my experience. You know, but uh, but this is what's happened to me, and this is what's happened to my wife and my daughter. So, and all of it's been well with Michaela. It's it's miraculous. I cannot believe it. The last time I saw her, it made me cry. I've never seen her look like that. She looks so good. She's so healthy, and, and so all of her other it. joints are not experiencing any problems. No, and anymore. she's taking no immunomodulators at all. No medication. None. And she was on them forever. Oh, Jesus, yes. More medication than you can shake a stick at. Methotrexate, which is basically, uh, they use it to treat cancer. It's, uh, it's uh, what, what's, what's the cancer treating drugs called? Whatever. I don't remember at the moment. She was on um, Enbrel, which really, really helped, but, but later opened to bacterial infection. So she always had pneumonia in the fall. Um, but Enbrel really helped. Um, and then heavy doses of antidepressants and Ritalin and Jesus. It was and just how a long has she been on this carnivore diet? Oh, God, she's only been eating meat. It's got to be at least six to eight months now. Wow. And does she get blood work done? Uh, yep. And her blood work, I won't comment on that. I don't know the details of her blood work. Um, so I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. It's fascinating. I'm curious. I'm, I'm, I'm considering trying it for a while. The problem is I, I eat so much game meat. I don't want, there's not a lot of fat I'll in get that. some fat. Yeah. That's the trick there. Try it for a month. See what happens. You, what the hell? A month, you know? Just a month. Yeah. No, a month's not hard. Yeah. Interesting.